On this episode, I get over my football loss hangover and drill some really hard questions right in the face. This is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 145 of the Ask Gary V Show. Monday morning, gloomy in the city when I got up this morning, which makes sense. Stunwin, super pumped with you. You were <laughs> converting you into a sports fan. That's freaking me out. Probably freaking, freak, probably freaking you out more. A little bit. It gets emotional, right? That yeah. late interception, you were upset. That was rough. D-Rock, you also are becoming a fan. Yeah. I was, and? I was pissed. Stefan, do you have a football team? I don't have a team, but I don't you watch the Jets too? India? I don't watch. I'm on TV and I don't like bars. Sports bars are loud and annoying. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm, in a, I'm in a bad mood, but not as bad as I thought. I think it comes down to the fact, as you guys saw Stefan edit this in, this prediction last week. Official prediction time. This one's going to hurt. I have a feeling that Decker and Ivory are not playing. Uh, I'm, uh, I think the Eagles are playing for their lives. I think that the Jets, uh, I, I don't think, the Jets have never beaten the Eagles in NFL history in a regular season game. Uh, and, uh, and I'm very, very concerned of this. I'm still very affected by the 1994, 93-94 game where the Jets were up 21-7 against the Eagles at home and then Eric Allen had a 99-yard interception return for a touchdown as the Jets were about to go up 28-7 in Johnny Mitchell's coming out party game. Uh, Eagles went on to win. There's just something bad about this game. I'm taking a ton of VaynerMedia Eagle fan employees, Mark Evans and Brandon Resnick and Taggart and Lindsey Price. I, I think I'm bringing too many employees to the game. That feels wrong. And I think the Jets, uh, the Jets stumble here. Uh, I think that uh, I think they stumble here. Unfortunately, I'm going to go Eagles 20, Jets 16. Hurts my feelings to go that route, but that's uh, that's my official prediction. I'm not gonna predict them to win every week. Uh, I will not be surprised if they win. I feel nice that they could win, but my official prediction is the Jets stumble this week 20 to 16. Kind of like the whole thing, like 30, 40 seconds kind of thing. Uh, so I've been really on point with my Jets predictions this year. I'm three for three. Uh, most people didn't think they were gonna beat the Colts. I was right about that. Most people didn't think they were gonna lose to the Eagles. I was right about that. But I'm feeling pretty good early on for London. Uh, speaking of London, I think I, I've got a busy schedule, but I feel a little motivated to maybe pull off a show on Friday or Saturday morning. But DRock, uh, in the comments on Facebook and YouTube or Twitter, hit up DRock. DRock, take control of this. Find a, a sane, awesome, skilled uh, recorder. I don't want to make. I don't want to do a live show. My, I'm, my parents are coming to London. I never get to spend time with them. They never travel. We took two family vacations. So as much as I love the Vayner Nation in the UK. I need to milk every second I have with them. Plus, I'll be in Jets mode. But I can be motivated to bang out a 20-minute show. And so one, one person maybe eh, could have an India. Seems like everybody wants your job anyway. Maybe two people uh, <laughs> can uh, play the role of that. So I may sneak in a Friday or Saturday recording for a show. Other than that, I'm feeling good. Um, I like your sticker. Uh, India. Let's... Get into the show. Uh, that was a whole new thing. All right, let's do it. Excited, focused, ready. Lachlan asks, I'm new to Medium. How do I build a community on it? Jab, 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 and hopefully someone notices. Cheers, bro. Uh, cheers, bro. I think the great thing about Medium, one of the reasons I invested in it, one of the reasons we write for it is you actually just have to put out good content because they're doing two things that are intriguing. One, there's a viral loop, people sharing, recommending it at the bottom. I was one of the early people to growth hack a little bit and ask for the hit the recommend, which created virality. They, but they also use human editors who just see a good piece of content and populate it to the email, to the top of the page. This is an incredible opportunity, my friends. Medium, in a lot of ways, has Reddit and dig dynamics that we haven't seen in a long time where you could be anybody you don't have to just juice using the juice of your social networks to get people there, but 
uh, you could be anybody who writes a good solid piece of content and then the machine, not the community, humans can decide to populate it and give you an opportunity to then siphon. The, the really holy grail for a lot of you and the reason I'm pushing so many of you in the Vayner Nation to write on it is you can write a nice piece of content, get lucky, but probably not lucky because it was a good piece of content, but a little serendipity along with that good piece of content and now you're populated, you get a you know, couple hundred, couple thousand people follow you off of the base of that being featured and away you go, you start building. And so that's for people with no audience. For all of you that are lucky enough to have some Facebook, some Twitter, some Instagram followers and users, you should put out content there and use that as an opportunity to be discovered. And so, um, you know, I, I've used Facebook very successfully to drive people towards Medium email services to drive people towards Medium, which then gets people reading and recommending, which creates more virality, which gets more people to recognize me and it becomes this viral loop. So it's not about jab, 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 right hooking, where that's a world of put out, put out, put out content and then ask for something. Uh, this is more about just putting out good content and letting the chips fall where they may. Uh, I think the other thing you can do is go out to other people that have audiences or other publications that may then want to republish a publication that has a link that says this was originally written in Medium and that links and so you're trying to create viral loop because the recommend at the bottom of Medium creates virality within Medium. There's a big audience there and that's where your opportunity lies. Very tactical off the gate on a Monday morning. Steven asks, how do I create value in the services I provide for clients in the same market while respecting their competitive advantage? That's interesting and we, and we kind of play with that a little bit with VaynerMedia. Not that we have any direct competitors but sometimes there's some nuances. Providing value uh, to different companies or individuals that are competing in the same uh, environment is tricky. First of all, you know, I would never be in an environment of like Pepsi and Coke or you know, where there's complete direct competitors you've got to be very, very, very careful. Uh, number two, um, I think that you need to really, really give thought about uh, how many different theses and strategies do you actually have? How, how many different things can people do? This is where you cannot just put one kind of blueprint and deploy it against each client. You've got to come up with unique value propositions creatively and strategically that allow them to kind of offset their competitive set. I, I think the answer is <laughs> very carefully. I think this is a massive challenge and I think, that, um, I think that one of the things that I would recommend to you is actually broaden the industries you're in just for that reason because I think that humans are emotional and they may not, even if you think that you're providing them separate value, you, you know, they may not and the consumer's perception is king. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, to me it's not that hard uh, because I do think you can get very different strategies, very different creative executions amongst those strategies to make uh, an action that those companies or individuals want to happen. I think the bigger problem is those individuals feeling as though that is happening and that's the vulnerability of your actual business. Perception, my friends, is absolutely reality because that's what people are making judgments on. I mean, who else is making the reality is a reality decision? There's no reality lord that comes down. <laughs> I am the reality lord. Like there's, none, there, there's no reality lord. Perception is reality because humans' perception is their reality. They're making decisions in that and that is the vulnerability in that question. I can't wait to see the graphics of it. You better start getting <laughs> Reality Lord. I want that again. When I just did it, I want it there too. I mean I want, it's gonna be, and I don't want the, <laughs> you know that's gotta hold it. And I want you to do the editing for that too. You, you might have edited that so share it with him. The <laughs> Episode's coming out late today. <laughs> Clinton asks, one time I farted in math class and everyone froze to figure out who did it. Do you have an embarrassing moment? <laughs> I do have an embarrassing moment story. In second grade, this is a classic. It's one of the moments I realized how amazing my mom was. You'll, I'll get to that punchline at the end. Mom, I know you're watching these shows. I don't know when the last time you thought about this was because we don't talk about it a lot. Uh, in second grade, uh, just normal day in second grade, just doing my thing. We got to the Pledge of Allegiance and uh, got to the Pledge of Allegiance and I really had to go to the bathroom. And, uh, and so I've been known my whole, man, lo, lo, until about 13, 14, 15, I would hold, <laughs> if I had a pee, I would hold my pee pee to like make sure I wouldn't pee. 
And so uh, in second grade, I'm doing that because I have to go to the bathroom. And I'm at my desk. And remember the desks that had the whole thing? And so, you know, like you had the chair, you had to go in like this, you had to go in like this, and then like the desk was here, right? You're like little, right? So I'm to the right of it, there's the part here, and we have to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And so because I, I, I didn't, like I, because I guess I didn't realize I could hold my PPE with my left hand, but when I went for the right hand, I decided to press my PPE <laughs> against the chair. This is a true story, by the way. And to make sure I wouldn't pee, that was unsuccessful, and I peed all over my desk and all over my pants. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously everybody heard the pee, everybody looked back. Unlike a fart, there was, Yes, Matt. <laughs> Unlike, uh, did I get my new phone? Yes, yeah, awesome. Don't. Don't what? Well, last time we had a weird event. Oh, I know, that's one. Okay. Uh, yeah. So obviously, unlike a fart, where you, you could be like, India did it. This was pretty obvious to me. There was a big, you know, I think I was wearing light pants, you know. And so I had to go to the nurse, and I went home. And when my mom picked me up, she told me the story of how my dad once peed in class which I found out later was not true. Uh, but she tried to make me feel better. Big kudos to Mrs. Zaznewski's second grade class. I am flabbergasted of how little flack I had to take for that event. It was, st- I, I went home, changed, came back to school. Good job of my mom too, not letting me do what I wanted to do, which was to stay home. Uh, uh, I was stunned by the lack of being made fun of for it. Uh, show a lot of a lot of maturity in that 1983-84 second grade class. So uh, that is my embarrassing story moment. Feels like there could be a really funny visual T-shirt to, <laughs> made of that for the show. Not sure what the market is for a, a, a T-shirt of an eight-year-old you peeing on a chair, but I'm sure it's out there. It's out there. Yeah. <laughs> It was, by the way, by the way, by the way, it was absolutely crazy. Like, like I peed on top of the desk and it was like dripping off. And like it was, a, it was a scene. <laughs> All right. Leland asks, I have vodka energy. It's an alcoholic beverage, but I don't drink. How do I mark it without telling lies? Jesus. Um, there's that, I, I keep, I don't, can somebody look up this guy? Who invented the Backstreet Boys and Sync? I think it's name's, it's not Ron Perlman, but it's it's similar kind of name. Um, you know, went to jail for fraud. Lou Perlman? Yeah, yeah. Lou Perlman is a fat, old, 50-year-old white guy that invented the two biggest boy bands of the 90s. Uh, and so he wasn't a 14-year-old girl. He wasn't listening to teeny bop music. Just because you are not a consumer of your product, I write books and don't read them. So this question's a piece of cake. Often, often, the best creators of products are people that are not the consumers of that product. So the, the way to not lie is to not say that you actually drink your product. And that happens all the time. Um, there's, even a, there's even a classic, you know, quoting a very classic uh, statement that I believe in tremendous, uh, never get high off your own supply, right? Like, I mean, I mean, this is well entrenched into our culture. Like, you don't have to use your thing uh, or consume your thing to be a reasonable voice. Not to mention, 99, don't get it twisted by the way I live my life. 99% of CEOs and owners and presidents and, and operators of companies are not the front men and women of their businesses. Like, like, you don't have to be the face of your company. Just be a business person and hire somebody who drinks vodka energy drinks, which is, oh, I don't know, everybody on Instagram. You know, and so like, like it's, you know, I mean, that's a very easy question. What was the, who's, who asked that? Leland. Leland, that's a piece of cake answer question, question answer. Um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Mike. Mike. Mike via the podcast. Well, you know what? Let's do a podcast exclusive today. Should bring that up. Is this the guy who actually, did I see this right? This is the guy who like switched? I'm adding on extra podcast, podcast on right when I was making the transition. To Two and a half hour drive or whatever? Or is uh, yeah. that somebody? Yeah. yeah. Do I do a good job paying attention to my Great community? Job. India? Great job. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> India. Uh, I don't know. 
The answer is, that happens with me all the time. Like, I stop and start things all the time. I love when people are like, oh, you said you were always gonna, yeah, okay, and what? Like, Jesus Christ. When you're innovating at scale, some things hit the ground, and so it lost momentum. That's the answer to your question, and, and good news. I'm gonna do one after this episode, because I feel guilty, okay? Great, you, you feel good about yourself? Yeah, I'm gui- I feel guilty. We'll do an exclusive podcast question today. Big ups to everybody on the treadmills and driving in their trucks. Good. <laughs> Make a statement of the day. It was an interesting Monday. Uh, I adore all of you. Have a wonderful week. Uh, we'll be doing a show Tuesday. We'll be doing a show Wednesday. Are we doing a show Thursday? Yeah. Sneaking one in before I go to London? Yeah. Great. And it looks like maybe try to do something Friday. I have a business. Work with Eric Fullwire. See if he can figure it out because I'm running around London doing some business. Uh, you keep asking questions. I'll keep answering them. Bless you. That's gonna be great. Keep that with the black and white. That's amazing. All right. By the way, you guys have to see Hamilton. Oh yeah. I saw. I saw. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh my God! I'm so pumped. I get to be the person that told you about it. You're gonna hear all about it for the next year, and you're gonna be like, Oh my God! Gary was the one that told me. Hamilton is a play, a musical on Broadway. That is unbelievable. It is about Alexander Hamilton, and the entire play is being wrapped. One. Is it, it, if you love history and you yeah, love hip hop, yeah. you have to go. It is bonkers. Right. Is, it, is it the one? It's based on the uh, the rap that the creator in the heist did at the, uh, at the exa- White House. Right? That's exactly what it is. Isn't that that's the one? Yep. That video is amazing. So the whole thing's like that. That video is a piece of dog shit compared to the show. <laughs> Guys, it's unbelievable. You got the video? Oh, I mean, I can bring pull, it. pull up the video. I just want to see Stefan. Like it's so good. It's that good. It's great. It's just great. It's literally the first hit when you search for this guy's name. Turn around. You ever seen In the Heights? Yeah. Turn around. Place. India, let India sit. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled uh, the White House called me uh, tonight uh, because uh, I'm actually working on a hip hop album. Uh, it's a concept album about the life of someone I think embodies hip hop. Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton. You laugh, but it's true. Um, he was uh, he was born uh, a penniless orphan uh, in St. Croix of illegitimate birth. Um, became George Washington's right hand man. Uh, became Treasury Secretary. Caught beef with every other founding father, uh, and all on the strength of his writing. I think he embodies uh, yeah. words' ability to make a difference. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the first song from that. Tonight, I'm accompanied by Tony and Grammy winning music director Alex Lacamoire. Uh, anything you need to know, I'll be playing uh, Vice President Aaron Burr. Uh, and snap along if you like. Aaron Burr in the, in the plays on Blue. How does a bastard orphan son of a whore and a Scotsman drop? In the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence, impoverished and squalor. Grow up to be a hero and a scholar. The ten dollar founding father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder, by being a lot smarter, by being a self-starter. By 14, then you placed him in charge of the trade and charter. 